Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journeys of the Zumbinis with Colorful Artie. So, we have made it pretty far into the game. We only have one land left to complete before reaching our destination, Zumbiniville. And that is this last one here. I will be the lead. Actually, wait, I think the leader will go here, actually. I've got to be the leader through here. So, we're still on the not-so-easy difficulty, which is ironically the easiest of them all. Let's continue to this final challenge. Throughout these gloomy mountains, strange carvings left by ancient peoples are everywhere. Welcome to the final land, the Mountains of Despair. This area is a lot more gloomy and dark th as, than the other ones. As you can see, we've got a giant abyss here and some very disconcerting architecture. The lion's lair. The stone lion requires a certain order from the Zumbinis before they can pass to move the lion's paw. The Zumbinis must be grouped together and sorted by one attribute, such as nose color. The symbols on the wall next to the lion give clues of what features to sort the Zumbinis by. For example, colored noses on the wall are hints to line up the Zumbinis by color of nose in the order that they appear on the wall. So you can see here, sure enough, we do have colors on the wall. Blue, orange, green, red, purple. That's the order we need to do in terms of colors of noses. So Zumbinis with blue noses are in the back. Zumbinis with purple noses will be in the front. So let's do that. It doesn't matter which blue nose Zumbinis go before which other blue nose Zumbinis, but all blue Zumbinis must come before all orange nose Zumbinis. Also, if you put a Zumbini in the wrong place, If you do that, it puts them in the proper place that they should be in, however, it also removes a peg from the wall. If all four pegs are gone, then this gate's going to come crashing down, preventing any Zumbinis from going past. So once again, we'll be forced to either leave them behind, or we'll all have to go back to the Shade Tree. It's not too bad, though. Alright, Marty's going to lead, I guess. Oh! I'm sorry, Marty. Yes, you can drop them into that pit, but thankfully they get pulled out by something. Oh man, I have to be closer to the back. Hip hip zumbini! Hip hip zumbini! So we're all here. That was a pretty simple puzzle, because all you really have to do is read and look carefully. And then, if we hit forward... The lion's actually a sweet guy, and is happy to let us through. Use the crystal filters to change the Zumbini's reflection. It will give them crystal slamming protection. Welcome to the second logical challenge of the Mountains of Despair, the Mirror Machine. This one, at least on this difficulty, is less about logical thinking and more just about looking carefully. The Mirror Machine. The Mirror Machine requires matching reflections before allowing Zumbinis to pass. Find matches between Zumbinis in your group and the reflections located on the right side of the wall. When you're ready, place a Zumbini on the cart and a matching image into the mirror on the opposite end, and then click the lever. If the images are identical, the Zumbini will pass to the other side. If not, the Zumbini will be knocked back to the Shade Tree base camp. Click on the lever again to clear the images and continue playing. So yes, we've got our Zumbinis over here. We've got some pictures of Zumbinis over here. 
minecarts. We've got to place a zucchini on the minecart, find the image that perfectly matches them, then pull the lever. If those images are identical, the crystal will rise up and they can go on on this mine track. If not, the crystal will lower, they'll smack head first into it, fall into that abyss, and you'd be teleported back to the shade tree, and their empty minecart will be what goes through. It's kind of disturbing. So really, this one's just about looking careful. You gotta look at your zubinis, look at what's on the wall, and figure out which uh, one of these pictures on the wall actually corresponds to a zubini that you own. In that case, it'll be this guy, because we've got a guy here, just like that. And you can double check before clicking the lever if these images match it perfectly, and they do. Now we pull the lever again, and new images come on the wall. So once again, we have to figure out which one of these correspond to an actual Zumbini that we have. And that will be this guy. Cyclops bowl cut, blue nose on a bicycle. Yeah, this is also interesting in that every, on each new ascending difficulty level, this puzzle kind of changes pretty drastically. Same general premise is getting the same image on both sides of this crystal, but the way you do it each new difficulty level is actually vastly different. So it's almost like four different logical puzzles all in one, which is pretty cool. We'll see more of that later, but this one is really just about looking carefully and not making any careless mistakes. Because careless mistakes are costly. And there we go. Also, I've mentioned it before, I believe, but I really love the art style of this game. It's very dark, but what I love is just, it really looks like it's hand-drawn or hand-painted graphics. Like, especially this one, like, the graphics look straight out of one of those Beatrix Potter animations. It's just beautiful. A plus. A plus. This is probably the puzzle where people can find out which Zumbini is uh, the one that has a matching reflection much quicker than I can. I'm just purposely going slower so I make sure I don't screw anything up. Also, occasionally, if you're lucky, you can get two pictures on the wall that correspond perfectly to two different Zumbinis that you have. And if that's the case, you can choose either one of them and it's not going to screw up anything. So that's, that's good design on their part. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Ah! I've been waiting for you, Star Fox. Also, the reflective, like, shininess effect on the crystal mirrors is amazing. I love it so much. There's Marty. I was wondering when she was going to show up. Here. 
And as the Zumbinis you have lowers down, it gets a lot easier and quicker to check which one is which. Oh, yep, and sure enough, it could have been that guy as well, which is pretty cool. And it's still that guy. So the question is, will I be the one who goes last? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. That's kind of funny. Well, you know what they say, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And as a kid, that never made any sense to me. You got them all through! Good for you! Thank you. Search first for traps. So easy to miss. To get Zumbinis across, Bubble Wonder Abyss! Alright, we're approaching the final challenge now. And I also love the little bit of poetry that the guy gives at the beginning of each challenge. Very good. Oh boy. Welcome to Bubble Wonder Abyss, one of the most visually impressive levels. And having very sad, melancholy music. Bubble Wonder Abyss. The Zumbinis are seeking a way across Bubble Wonder Abyss. Directional arrows and Zumbini features tell you the direction a Zumbini will move in. For example, Zumbinis will move in the direction the white arrow is pointing. If a square displays an arrow with a symbol of a Zumbini feature, such as a red nose, any Zumbini matching that feature will travel in the direction of the arrow. Those that do not match continue in their original direction. Be aware that some arrows change direction once a Zumbini has passed over it. Plan ahead before sending the Zumbinis on their way. The order is important. That is very true. So this is a nice little grid system. Essentially how it works is you've got the arrow here and the arrow here. We can put a Zumbini on that. They'll get encased in a bubble and start flying over the abyss. And they'll start on these grid paths and we'll just follow in a direction. If they touch an arrow, they will move in that direction. So we've got here, like, purple nose. Any Zumbini with a purple nose passing over that square will immediately move into this vortex. The vortexes, if a Zumbini touches that while they're in a bubble, will die. The bubble will pop and they will fall into the abyss back to the shade tree, and you will have to leave them behind or go back to the shade tree to start again from the beginning of the Mountains of Despair. Also, you can see this arrow here. If Zumbinis pass over it, will go in the direction of the white arrow, but there's also a gray arrow here. When they pass over it, the white arrow will change clockwise towards the area of the gray arrow. In later difficulties, you will find things that will have more than one gray arrow. It will go in the clockwise direction, which is good. Also important to note, if two Zumbinis touch each other while they're in bubbles, they're, both their bubbles will pop and they will both fall into the abyss back to the shade tree. So if you want to be careful, just do it one at a time, or make sure that the paths that you to put the Zumbinis down don't overlap at all. So let's just see what happens. If we send a Zumbini here, they'll go up, hit this arrow, turn right, then hit this arrow, and turn, and they will be heading straight towards this vortex. The only way they won't fall in the vortex is if they have a purple nose. Whereas if we go this way, if a Zumbini has a purple nose, they will go into the vortex. So all purple noses must go this way. So let's do that. This way has no overlap at all, so it's safe to just put as many Zumbinis down here as possible. So all the purple noses are going down this path and we'll reach safety, which is excellent. So now this path, no more of our Zumbinis can go down this path. So let's see what this path takes us. If we go to the right and we go up, no Zumbini are gonna, is going to touch that. If they go up and they have glasses, they're going to hit the vortex. And if they don't have glasses, they will go to the exit. Whereas if they go down this path and they have a Cyclops eye, they're also going into the vortex. And if they don't have a Cyclops eye, they go to the exit. So here we essentially want to alternate glasses, cyclops, glasses, cyclops, glasses, cyclops, and uh, no, no, that's bad. No, 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 no. That is the opposite of what we want to do. We want to alternate cyclops, glasses, cyclops, glasses, cyclops, glasses, so that nobody goes into the vortex. We have one, two guys with glasses, and then one, two, three, four, five, six guys who are a cyclops. But keep in mind, the other guys who are not glasses or cyclops can go 
any way they want, and that won't affect them. So let's start by putting a Cyclops through. So he hits that trigger and goes up, and then the arrow changes to the right now. Which means we're going to want to send a guy with glasses across, so that way he won't have to go that way. And you might be thinking, well, why don't you just send all the guys without glasses and Cyclops first? Except if you do that, you're eventually going to be stuck with like six Cyclopses left, and you're going to have to send three of them into that Cyclops vein, which will go to the Vortex. So you actually need to think ahead of time before sending the Zumbinis. So now the next person is going to be a Cyclops. Person after that is going to have glasses. I'm going to space them out a bit more this time just to ensure they don't hit each other. I don't think they would, but just in case. So we have no more glasses, guys, but we still don't want to send a Cyclops or else the Cyclops is going to head into the Vortex, so we can send just a normal Zumbini. And then we'll send another Cyclops. Then we'll send the guy with tired eyes. Then we'll send another Cyclops, then we'll send the guy with sunglasses, and then we'll send another Cyclops, and that'll be just enough to get everybody across. If we had even one more Cyclops, we'd be in trouble. But then again, if we had one more Cyclops, the level would have been designed differently, so we could get them all across. I believe in, there was a, so there's a Steam remake of this game, and from what I've read, this one is bugged slightly, and that Bubble Wonder Abyss is occasionally impossible in that version. In this original version, Bubble Wonder Abyss is always possible. On the later difficulties, it gets mind-bogglingly difficult, but it's always possible. And it's really cool the way they ensure it actually is possible. It's, like, very impressive. But yeah, that's Bubble Wonder Abyss. When you play it, these features will be probably different, but it's the same general puzzle each time, I believe. Hip, hip, zombie! Hip, hip, zombie! There also might be... Because so this is essentially a template where, like, this will appear as a possible thing for the first difficulty. And these features that appear on these might be different every time. But it'll always be these two will have the same feature, and then these two will have different features. Mm -hmm. And it'll be, they'll be selected in such a way that it'll be possible to get your Zumbinis across every time. There might be a different template with the things in different places, but it's the same general puzzle. All Zumbinis with a certain feature have to go one path, and then on the other path you have to alternate between Zumbinis with other features to ensure they all get across. But that's Bubble Wonder Abyss! Is this it? Could this be the place they've been seeking? A place of hope and prosperity? Zumbiniville! And welcome to Zumbiniville, your final destination in the game. So welcome to Zumbiniville, where we have fireworks in the daytime to celebrate our triumph. So this is a nice little place here. Our Zumbinis are celebrating their newfound freedom, and we have some cool buildings. We can also move around and see more of this place. Zumbiniville, yes! Thanks to you, the Zumbinis have found the perfect spot to build a new community. Click to the left and right of the screen to see more of this bountiful region. If you successfully bring a full band of 16 Zumbinis through one entire leg of the journey, they're talking about a world on a specific difficulty you haven't done before, then a special building for the community will be constructed to commemorate the perseverance and fortitude of the Zumbini group during that part of the journey. Click on the small plaque located on each community building to read about the Zumbini's brave adventures. Now that you've made it, hundreds more await freedom at Zumbini Isle, and you can't let them down. Click on the map icon to get back to Zumbini Isle, Shelter Rock, or Shade Tree to bring more Zumbinis along the journey to Zumbiniville. Can you free them all? Will you win all 16 reward buildings? The Zumbinis are counting on you. Yes, very nice, isn't it? But don't you have a job to do? Zumbinis to free? Well, yes, we do. However, there are hundreds of Zumbinis because there's every single possible combination 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 2 because every single Zumbini has a twin. 
That's a lot of Zumbinis to save, several hundred. I will not be going after saving every single Zumbini, because that will be extremely redundant. Like I said, I'm just going to try to save enough Zumbinis so that I can go through every single world on all four difficulties. So that means I'm going to have to go through every single world, I believe, eight times, because you need to do... Well, no, seven times, because I only need to do the last difficulty once. But it's actually going to be more than that, because... The Deep Dark Forest and then the Swamp, which are in the Fork, you can only go through one of them in a given adventure, but regardless of your adventure, you have to go through the Big, the Bad, and the Hungry, and the Mountains of Despair. So those I'll have to do a lot. Anyhow, let's check out these buildings. This band shell was built to honor the Zumbinis, who ambled past allergic cliffs, cruised on by stone-cold caves, and appeased Arno the almost omnivorous, when traveling was not so easy. April 3rd, 2018. Yes, that's when I'm recording this. This windmill was wrought to honor the Zumbinis who flushed the finicky fleens in Hotel Dementia, had pleasant dreams, and catapulted cleanly over Mudball Wall when traveling was not so easy. April 3rd, 2018. This general store was erected for the Zumbinis, who did not lag in the lion's lair, solved the secrets of the mirror machine, and flew above Bubble Wonder Abyss. When traveling was not so easy. April 3rd, 2018. That is pretty cool. So every time you get all 16 Zumbinis through one of the difficulty ranks in a world that you haven't done before, a new building comes up here. And that's what I'm going after. So now that we're on the map screen, we've actually got a huge amount of challenges we've done. It's pretty cool. So we can go to Zumbini Isle, Shelter Rock, Shade Tree, or Zumbiniville at any time in Continued Journey, but we can't click on things like Hotel Dementia. You're going to have to go to practice mode for that. And that's all the time we have for this episode. And then, uh, Thank you very, very much for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you tune in next time, in between episodes, I'm going to go back to Zumbini Isle, get a new 16 Zumbinis, and rush through the big, the bad, and the hungry again. Because it's on the same difficulty, I don't want to show that off again. That'll just be redundant. And I'll make it to Shelter Rock. So then in the next tree, uh, the next episode, I'm going to continue from Shelter Rock with that new band of 16 and go up into the Swamplands and complete that on the first difficulty rank. I hope to see you then. Have a great day, and God bless.